Hi everyone, thanks for taking the time to attend this talk. My name is Jack, and I work at Alibaba, mainly focus on the Flexico and the Table API. I'm also a PMC member and committer of Apache Flink. Today, my colleague Qing Shen and I want to talk about uh, change data capture and the processing with Flexico. And here is the agenda. We'll first introduce the uh, integration of Flexico and uh, change data capture, and then we will discuss how it works and the advantages of using Flexico for CDC. After that, we will show a live demo to use Flexico to capture change data from upstream databases. Lastly, we will close the session with an outlook of upcoming features around Flexico and CDC. So let's have a look at the typical data warehouse architecture first. Nowadays, application logs and the database data are two of the foundational data blocks when building a data warehouse, no matter it is a traditional data warehouse or a real-time data warehouse. Essentially, application logs and the database data are both some kind of even streams because the truth of the database uh, is the transaction log, and the transaction log is some kind of the stream. So uh, Apache Flink has been one of the state-of-the-art stream processing system, and uh, Flink SQL, uh, and the Flink is good at consuming application log streams with a great out-of-box experience. However, consuming database change log stream with Flink used to be rather adventurous. But with the introduction of support for CDC in the latest Flink 1.11 release, uh, the developers can now implement change data capture using just SQL. That's the background of the CDC support in Flink SQL to make the Flink SQL can natively consume uh, change log string and unlock and unlock lots of use cases. So we will talk about the CDC first. What is the CDC? Uh, CDC is change data capture, and there are, there are basically two ways you can go about with uh, CDC. The first one is called uh, query-based CDC, where you periodically uh, pull your database for changes, and each time you will ask, uh, did anything change since last, since last, uh, since last time I checked? Uh, the typical project in open source is Apache is Apache Scoop. So query-based CDC has its advantages advantages for some use cases. Uh, like it like if being much simpler or no hassle if you want to do something like check a slowly changing dimension. But for most use cases where you want to react to data as soon as possible after it is generated. It carries some problems. For example, uh, some data changes might get lost uh, in between pulls. Like if you are running this query every, every, every five minutes, and in this interval, a record changes dead twice, and you only get one change. And uh, uh, if a record is deleted, you just lost track of it. And it requires a last uh, last uh, updated updated column on your database table, uh, because query based CDC uses current checks what what changed since last time. And the last uh, there is uh, always a trade off between the frequency and uh, the load on your DB. Uh, the frequency means you can query your database home uh, home frequency. And uh, uh, this, is, this is essentially true if you are sharing uh, the database source with other teams. Um, but so many problems, and uh, there, is always, there should be a way to do this differently. Uh, we all know that all databases have an immutable log that registers all the transactions that have been successfully uh, executed in the system. In Postgres, this is, co this is called write-ahead log. In MySQL, spin log. 
This is what log-based uh, CGC proposes. It tells the database transaction log and gets the largest changes. This guarantees that all data changes are captured and you can get uh, the previous date, you can capture the delete oper operations and since you are reading the log, not the, not the databases, so you don't need to change your business model and the impact on the source DB is minimal. Because the execution mode is natively streaming, not a periodically batch, the so end-to-end latency is truly low. And the typical project for log-based CDC is the Dibson. There, is, uh, there isn't one right way to do CDC, so, uh, but in this talk, the log-based CDC is the one we will explore. And uh, probably the most popular tool to do this log-based CDC out there these days is the Dibson. What is great, uh, what's great about it is that it gives you a standard format for change events. So you, you can process this data in the same way, regardless where, where it is coming from. And uh, it transforms your database into event streams that can be consumed in real time. Dibson is built on top of Kafka and provides Kafka Connect connectors for the most common databases like MySQL, Postgre, uh, Oracle, uh, Six River. The, ch the change events are pushed into uh, Kafka from where you can basically, basically uh, process them with pretty much anything, of course, including Apache Frink. So since, since Frink 1.11, Frink supports to consume uh, JSON encoded Dibson data uh, from Kafka. The way to do it is uh, very simple. You can just uh, use the Dibson JSON format in the properties of your Kafka backed tables. And Frank is then able to describe the format and uh, interpret the Dibson change log into Frank's insert, delete, uh, update events. So when you select such table in Frank SQL, it is indeed a real-time materialized, materialized view on source database table. We also have a demo to show how Frank SQL is integrated with Dibson to capture change data. In this demo, we have a post, post grace with some data, which is our source of the change events. And we have a Kafka and Kava connector to deploy Dibson to get the change events. We have a Frink cluster and a single client to submit Frink queries. And finally, we will sync the whole thing to Elasticsearch and Kibben. Uh, but because of the limited time, we are not going to show this demo in this talk, but I put the demo video li link at the bottom of the page. Uh, you, can check the, you can check the link and watch the whole talk, which is presented by Mata. And next, we will take a look how Flink SQL supports the CDC. Support CDC for Flink SQL is not a complex uh, task. It is just a feature support on the source connector. Because change log is already is already the foundation of Flink SQL. Uh, the proposed dynamic table uh, concept in 2017 makes uh, uh, Frink SQL to be a unified API for batch and uh, stream processing. And uh, you can check the blog uh, which, pro which proposed the uh, dynamic table uh, at the right bottom. So continuous query on dynamic tables. The key idea of the blog is that the change, the, the change log string and the dynamic table are dual. And it defines the conversion between change log, uh, between ch between change log string and the dynamic table. We will show a concrete example to to uh, il uh, uh, to to show how change log mechanism works in Flink SQL internally. Uh, 
and uh, uh, see this uh, cascading aggregation. It first conducts a simple word count aggregation and then calculates the frequency of each count. If we have three words, uh, two hello and one word, then the expected result should be like this. The frequency of count one should be one, and the frequency of count two should also be one. The change log mechanism idea is borrowed from database transaction log. With the transaction mechanism, every record has a meta to represent what is the change operation of this record. A change operation can be insert, update, or delete. Here, the source, we, the source will emit two insertion records, hello and word. The first aggregation will accumulate them and emit two insertion records, hello count one and word count one. So the frequency of count one is two now. Then another hello record comes in. The first aggregation will update the count of hello from one to two. And uh, so this is an um, update operation. In many database bin log systems, they will check such uh, such uh, update uh, operation in two records, update before and update after. Um, so so is Frink, and uh, the update before uh, represents before. Uh, content of an uh, updated uh, record and the update, update after represents the uh, after content of the updated record. We will generate um uh, we will generate an update before for the previous image hello one and uh, an update after for the new image hello two. When the update before arrives the uh, uh, second uh sorry. When the, when the update before arrives the uh, second aggregation, it will first do a rejection uh, for this record uh, to manage the frequency from 2 to 1. When the update after arrives the second aggregation, it will do accumulation for this record. It will insert count 2 frequency 1 into the result table. So as you can see, the change log mechanism uh, with the change log mechanism, the final result is correct. And in in a nutshell, in a nutshell, first the change log um, mechanism is already supported in the pipeline of Flinksql. Second, the sync connector is already supposed to consume change logs produced by the Flinksql uh, queries. Lastly, the source connector doesn't support to produce change log string, and it is the only missing part in the whole story. Uh, so we started the Flip95, a new table source interface, and this has been re released in uh, Flink 1.11. The legacy table source interface only supports to produce insert only records, and uh, Flip95 introduces a new table source interface called scan table source, which can produce insert, delete, and update inference. The, uh, the, get, the get change log mode method in the scan table source uh, is used when, and when planning. It tells the framework what kinds of events will be produced during runtime. The framework will now uh, this is a change log source when this mod this method returns all kinds. The kind of change log event is represented by the log kind uh, class. It con it contains insert, update before, update after, and uh, delete. Log data is uh is the only data structure can be emitted by the new table source implementation. It contains a log kind metadata to indicate the kind of change event. During runtime, the source implementation should emit log data with the proper log kind to represent insert, update, or delete events. So if we are interpreting Debian data from a Kafka topic, for example, 
uh, this is a division update event. Uh, it updates the value of email column. And uh, uh, we can see that the division update event will uh, is consists consists of five parts. The before field has the state of the row with the value before update operation, and the after field has the updated state of the row, and the source field has the some has some meta information, and the TSMS is uh, shows the timestamp when when the present process is event. As we can see, uh, when we interpreting such event, it will convert it into two raw data. One is the update before with the old email, and another is the update after with the new email. Both of them will be emitted by the source by the source to the downstream operators. So if you already have the Debian as your extraction layer to capture change data to capture uh, to Kafka, uh, so you can use Spring SQL as your transformation and loading layer. layer. Uh, this is very easy to use. You can simply use the Debian JSON format in properties of your Kafka backed uh, tables, and uh, and Spring is then able to visualize the format. And you can load the transformed data to external systems such as Elasticsearch and uh, HBase. And uh, with something like with something as simple as SQL, you can build the CDC application with the, with the performance, scalability, consistency of your any other with of uh, like any other uh, Flink program, and you have a whole ecosystem around it, yeah, and make it really easy to write. And uh, and makes it uh, easy to write an end-to-end -end streaming application with just SQL. Furthermore, we can have a much much simpler architecture for this application. And uh, in current arch architecture, we have to deploy Kafka and the Kafka Connect and uh, deploy Debian to capture the uh, change events. So, is it possible to get the change events via Spring SQL directory? With the new TableSource interface, the answer, the answer is yes. We have developed a Spring SQL connectors uh, project to uh, support streaming reading change data from MySQL and Postgres. The Spring SQL CDC project has uh, project has been open sourced in GitHub. You can check the link here. And you can simply use them by defining MySQL CDC uh, connector in the properties of the table. And Flink is then able to capture change data from the databases. And uh, the magic under it uh, is that we are using the Debian as the, as the embedded engine. In Flink, in Flink source function. So users don't don't need to deploy the Debian service anymore. So with the Flink SQL, with the Flink CDC connectors, Flink SQL now can be a powerful method to extract, transform, and load data at the same time. We will have a live demo for this later. I would like to Mention more about Flink SQL. Uh, um, 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 I, I would like to mention more about Flink CDC connectors because it makes uh, Flink SQL can be a, an extraction layer for databases. It has some advantages. Ad, advantages. For example, uh, this can simplify your real time pipeline and reduce end to end delay. It simplifies the architecture and reduces the cost of deployment. And uh, maintenance. You can use Spring SQL as an inflated CDC to synchronize your data from database to other data systems, and uh, no data landing, so you can reduce the cost of some Kafka storage. The Spring SQL, the Spring CDC sources, uh, will first take take a full snapshot on the database, and then smoothly switch to the streaming change log reading with exactly once 
symmetric, so it can guarantee the data consistency. Okay, next, my colleague Qing Shen will present a live demo to show a CDC streaming pipeline with Flink SQL. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Jark, for your excellent talk. And now it's my turn. Um, I'm Qing Sheng, and about myself, I received my master's degree from Carnegie Mellon last year, and I'm currently working as a software engineer in Alibaba. And now I'm going to show you two demos about how to use Flink SQL together with MySQL, Postgres, Elasticsearch, and Kafka to build a CDC streaming ETL system. So let's assume that you are working for an e-commerce company. So orders and shipments are your most important data. And you want to build a system to analyze the delivery status of all orders in real time. But as your company growing up, information about products, orders, and shipments are scattered in different databases and tables. In order to solve the problem, we need to build a streaming ETL to consume full and incremental data from your databases and join them together into a wide table, which could facilitate subsequent analysis. So in the first demo, I will show you how to capture data changes in MySQL and Postgres, join the data together using powerful Flink SQL, and finally sync the data into Elasticsearch. And in this demo, I will use no single line of Java or Scala code, purely in SQL. And you can also try our demo in this Flink CDC connectors repo on GitHub. Okay, so let's start. So before we start the demo, um, I have to set up my environment. So with the help of this Docker Compose file, I will start several containers. So two containers for my data sources, Postgres database and MySQL database. And Elasticsearch as the data sync of Flink. And it's related Kibana for data visualization. And the Kafka and Zookeeper, which will be used in, in the second demo to show you how Flink CDC is integrated with Kafka. So let's launch those dockers. Wait for or wait for a few seconds, and I will launch a client for MySQL. Okay, I think the Docker is not ready. Let's try again. Okay, cool. And I will start a client for Postgres. Okay. And then I will start a mini cluster locally, mini Flink cluster locally on my machine, my laptop. So let's have a check if it is, if it is running now. Hmm. Let's refresh the page. Yep. You can see we have six available task slots. Okay. And then I will start a SQL client connected to the Flink cluster I launched just now. Okay. And then let's start up a demo. So first I need to create a database in MySQL. And then I will create two tables inside that database. So the first one is called products, including three columns inside, ID, name, and description. And then I will set the ID starting from 101. Okay. And then I will insert nine products inside that table. Okay. And for the second table called orders, we have six columns inside. And this product ID is related to the ID here in the products table. So if 
I create it. And you can see the order ID will start from 10,001. And then I will insert three orders inside that table. And if I um, have a check, and you can see we have three orders now, um, 10,001, two, and three. Okay? And my SQL is ready now. And then the Postgres, I only have one table called shipment with five columns inside. And this order ID is related to the order ID here in MySQL. So if I create it here, okay, and I will set the shipment ID starting from 1001. And for capturing changes in Postgres, please remember to set the replica identity to full. On the table, you're going to capture changes or you will lose track of some of your columns of this table, okay? And then I will insert three shipment records related to three orders I inserted into MySQL just now. You can see the order ID here. 1001, 2, and 3. Okay. And my Postgres is ready now. And then I will create three source tables related to three database tables I created in MySQL and Postgres just now. So the first one is products table, which is using MySQL CDC connector. And it, it will capture changes from products table in MySQL. So here, and the second table orders, which is also using the MySQL CDC connector. And it will capture changes from orders table in MySQL. Okay. And the third source table called shipments, which is using Postgres CDC connector and it will capture changes from shipments table in Postgres. Okay. And then I will create a sync table called enriched orders, which is connected to Elasticsearch. So I create it. Okay. And finally, I'm going to execute this SQL in the Flink SQL client. So in this SQL, I will select these fields from a joint table called uh, created by orders, products, and shipments. And finally, insert orders, insert informations into this enriched orders table. And if I insert it, and this SQL will submit a Flink job to the mini cluster I started just now. And let's have a check in the Flink um, dashboard. And you can, you can see here that we have a job running now. And if we check the detail, yeah. So from this page, we can clearly see the topology of the job we submitted just now. So in this job, we have three sources. So these two are connected to MySQL, and this is connected to Postgres. So under these three source tables, the CDC connectors will consume all records from databases, database tables. Um, so the CDC connector will run in two phases. So the first phase is called snapshot phase, which will read all records existed in database table and push them to downstreams in Flink. And then in the second phase called bin log reading phase, and the CDC connector will monitor the log file of the database and generate new records and push them to downstreams in Flink. And finally, these records are joined together into a joint table. And this joint table will emit absurd event to Elasticsearch 
So this will promise that the data in Elasticsearch is identical to the materialized view of this join table. Okay. And you can see that we have received some records here. So let's have a check in the um, Kibana. So if I refresh the page, and you can see here we have received three records, three orders from two sources. And you can see here the shipment information has been joined together with the order. Okay. And now I'm going to make some changes to two databases, MySQL and Postgres, and see what will happen here in Elasticsearch. Okay, so first step, I will insert a new order from a customer named Patrick. So if I insert into the MySQL, and if I refresh the page here, yep, you can see the new order has been written into the Elasticsearch. And since I haven't insert any shipment information for this order, so these fields are blank now. And if I insert the shipment information related to this order into Postgres, if I, so these are blank, these were blank just now. And if I refresh it, so you can see the shipment information has been joined into this order. Okay. And then I'll set the status of this order to true, meaning the customer has processed the um, payment. So if I update it, so here in Elasticsearch, previously the status of this order was false. And if I refresh the page, it is set, it is set true. It is set to true. Okay. So if I, um, update the shipment information, the is arrived column to true, meaning the product has been delivered to the customer. So update it. So previously it was false here. If I refresh the page, it is updated to true. Okay. And finally, I'm going to remove this order from MySQL. And on the Elasticsearch site, you can see that order has been removed. Okay. So from this demo, um, you can see that Flink SQL is a very powerful tool for you to establish a um, streaming ETL system easily by using only SQL. And in the next demo, I will show you how Flink CDC is integrated with Kafka with the help of a new format called changelog JSON format. So in Flink SQL, I will create another sync table called Kafka GMV, which is using Kafka connector. And the key of this table is that we are using a changelog JSON format, which can serialize changelog information into a JSON formatted string and write it into Kafka. Okay. So I will create it here. And then I will execute this SQL in Flink SQL client. So in this SQL, we will aggregate the price per day to calculate the GMV, which is gross merchandise volume. And that is how much you earned per day. And if I run it here, so we submit another job to Flink. And let's have a check. So here, the job is running. Okay. So with the help of the new changelog JSON format, we can also establish a materialized view of the Kafka sync table. 
by just executing this SQL select star from Kafka GMV. And you can see that we have a real time table here. And since, so if you notice that orders, and make it wider. And since the status of orders are set to false when we initialize the MySQL database, so nothing has been paid. So our GMV is empty here. And we can also use a tool called Kafka Cat to check if there is any record in Kafka GMV topic. And you can see it's empty here. Okay. And next, I'm going to set the status of order to true one by one. And let's see what will happen in Kafka and here in this table. Okay. So the first table, sorry, this first order set to true. And you can see that we received one record in this topic. So this is an insert event. So the GMV has been changed to 50.5, which is the price of the first order. And you can also see the table here has been updated. Okay. And then if I update the status of the second order, so you can see we received two records in this topic. So this is the update before event, which will reverse the previous invert, uh, insert event, and then a update after event, which will insert a new, a new record. So here, if I refresh the page, yeah, you can see the GMV has been updated to 65.5. Okay. And if I update the third order, we received another two records. Okay. And the GMV here has been changed to 90.75. Okay. And now I'm going to insert a new order, which is from John von Neumann and with the price 50. And if I insert it, and you can see we received two records in Kafka GMV topic, and the GMV has increased to um, 140.75. Okay. And then if I reset the price of this order from 50 to 40, So this time we received four records in Kafka. Okay. So the GMV decreases first from 140 to 90 and then increase back to 130. And you can see the GMV has been updated here. Okay. And um, finally, if I try to delete this order, and you can see the GMV has fall back to 90.75. And here, finally, the GMV has become 90.75. Okay. So if I also do the aggregation in MySQL, so here, you can clearly see that these two tables are identical. This is generated by MySQL and this is generated by those um, change log records from Kafka. So in this demo, you can see that with the help of this change log JSON format, you can even use Flink CDC together with an append only message queue like Kafka. Okay, and these are our demos. And let's go back to our slides. So in a nutshell, if these use cases fit your business scenario, Flink SQL and CDC will be a very good choice. So if you already have Debezium and Kafka as your extraction tools, you can choose Flink SQL as your transforming and loading tool. 
And if you want to use Flink SQL as a unified ETL pipeline, and if you want to work on real-time data synchronization, transferring, and data warehouse building, and if you want to build a real-time materialized view on database tables, or if you want to maintain and build a search index. And last but not least, temporal join with changelog source. And about, about our, our future plan in Flink 132, we're going to support temporal join with changelog source. And in ticket Flink 18 and 826, we're going to support um, using Kafka as an absurd source and sync. And we will support more CDC formats, such as Divisum Avro, uh, Maxwell, and Oracle Golden Gate. And in Flink um, 18 and 825, we're going to support processing CDC message in batch mode. And finally, we will support more kinds of databases in Flink CDC connectors. So if you're interested in contributing to Flink SQL and CDC, feel free to raise your proposal and ideas to Flink community. And all right, thank you for your listening. You can post your questions in the chatting channel or raise your questions in our mailing list. And we should have a brilliant travel together with Flink CDC. Thank you.